Fog of Gaming here and welcome to part 2 of the Rainbow Six Siege Tips and Tricks. In this new series you will get 10 tips and tricks that will improve your game and your domination on the battlefield. Part 1 were basic tips and tricks and in part 2 you will see some advanced tips and tricks together with some pretty cool stuff. Did you know that you can kill with the M120 CREM? For the uninitiated this is a weapon mounted breach charge capable of blowing open a door or a wall from a distance. It can only be used when you are playing with Ash. When your enemy is hiding close to a wall then you can use this device to kill him. Shoot your charge as close as possible to your enemy and when it detonates it will kill him. Most people use this device to get rid of the standard barricades. But keep in mind that you can do a lot more with this thing. You just saw that you can kill with it, but did you know that you can also use it to clear the ceiling or the floor? This way you can kill your enemy from above or from below. Just aim at the wooden floor and let the device do what it's supposed to do. Not only can you use this device to clear the floor, you can use your standard breaching charge as well. Attach them to the floor the same way you would attach them to a standard barricade. You can even use termites grenades to do this. You can also clear the floor with your gun by shooting or hitting it, but it would take too long. The other techniques are a lot faster. The reason why you should consider this tactic is very simple. It will make it a lot easier to win the game for your team. Imagine that you are defending. You covered all the walls, doors and windows. Single jammers, C4 and shock wires in place. Everybody has a good hiding spot behind this fence. Perfect, right? But um, nobody considered the ceiling, right? And that's the problem, there is nothing that you can do from inside that room. By clearing the ceiling above the objective you will make it a lot more difficult for the defending team. They can't cover all doors and windows together with the ceiling. They will look at the ceiling for a few seconds but they can't focus their attention on it for very long. That's where you come in. You just created a few more lines of sight and all you have to do is make some easy kills. You will give the game a whole new dimension. Combine this with Fuse and let him deploy his cluster charge and he will do a lot of damage to the defending team. I have to tell you that there is a way to counter this besides shooting back at the guy above you. Just ask one of your buddies to roam around upstairs to kill anyone that tries to do this or you can throw your nitro cell on the ceiling and you can take them out that way. Unfortunately this happened to me and not the other way around. I learned that the hard way. A similar tactic is to shoot through small openings in walls or through those drone entry points. A lot of walls are breachable, which means that you can shoot through them as well. Just shoot a few rounds at your preferred location so that you can make a hole that is big enough for you to see and shoot through, but small enough so that the enemy won't notice it. All you have to do is wait and pull the trigger as soon as you see your enemy. In part 1 I showed you that you can use your second drone as well. This item is very valuable to gather intel. And if you use it right, then you can even make some super easy kills with it. The first tactic is to do this yourself. Go and find an enemy and then shoot him through the closest wall or barricade. The second tactic requires some teamwork. This is where your dead bodies come in handy. Use your drone to identify your enemy, but don't spot them and try to make sure that they didn't see your drone. Think about how you are going to kill him. In this example I chose to breach this wall. So attach your charge, let your buddy spot him at the right time or do this yourself if you are fast enough. Put your aim on the red marker that you now see on your screen, detonate your charge and shoot. He won't even stand a chance. This is a super easy kill but you need to inform your buddies so that they know what to do. One thing to keep in mind when you use your drone is to leave it in a useful location. When you are attacking and you have found the objective, then try to hide your drone near that objective. Make sure that you have a good line of sight. If you or your buddies are dead, then they can see the camera feed of your drone and they can use it to spot the enemy. This is valuable intel and it will make your life a lot easier. If your buddies are using comms, then don't spot the enemy all the time. It might even be better not to spot them at all. Just tell everyone where they are. When you are defending, then don't spot the enemy with the camera unless you really have to. I still see a lot of people who aren't aware of these cameras and they will just walk past them. Unless they are spotted. Then they will stop whatever they're doing and they will shoot at the camera and you won't be able to see them anymore. So tell your buddies where the enemy is and you will be able to keep them in sight and they won't even know about it. For everyone that was in the closed beta, 
You might have noticed that we can't choose our spawn locations anymore in a casual game. Just know that the only way to choose your spawn is in a ranked game. Oh yeah, keep in mind that the first floor doesn't mean the same thing in every country. In some areas the first floor means the ground level and in other areas this means the floor above that. When you are playing with your friends who all live in your hometown then you will be fine. But most of the time you will be playing with people from all over the place. I would recommend to forget what it means in your country and use the in-game information. Next to your compass is the name of the room or the floor. 1F is first floor, 2F second floor and so on. Same thing for the cameras. This way everyone will know what you're talking about. Some people are afraid to go outside on defense. They see that warning and they think that it's like a battlefield and that they will die after a certain amount of time. It's not like that in Rainbow Six Siege. You are more than welcome to go outside. In fact, it's a very good tactic to do this at the right time. The only thing that will happen after 5 seconds is that your enemy will get a warning on his screen, warning them that somebody has gone outside. And they will see your location as well. That's it, you won't die automatically. It's a pretty good way to catch your enemies off guard because most of them aren't expecting this. There are lots of ways to go outside on every map, but on the house map this is extremely useful. You can flank your enemies very easily and you can even move from room to room. The area between the master bedroom and the kids bedroom is very useful. And the area between the bathroom and the workshop as well. You can even shoot inside through that big window above the stairs. I bet your enemy didn't see that one coming. Last but definitely not least, put your volume slightly higher than usual. Audio is super important in Rainbow Six Siege. Most of the time you will hear what your enemy is doing long before you get eyes on him. It will give you a big advantage. I hope that you liked this video and that you will share it with all your buddies. This was Fog of Gaming, thanks for watching and I will see you on the battlefield.